XOXO, Gossip Girl. There you go, now I can do it. Perfect. Hi, Kristen. Hi. Thanks for coming on The Avocado Show. Thank you for having me. So before we get started, can you tell us where we are? We are at Lady Bird in New York City. And what are you eating? The dish that is actually, I think, called the avocado. It is sliced avocado, seaweed, fried avocado, microgreens, and a miso dressing. Yum. Mm. Well, before you can get to that, we have some questions for you. Are you ready? Yes, I really have to earn this. Yeah, you have to earn that. You have okay. to earn your avocado on the show. Okay. So your career began when you dropped out of NYU and got a job on Broadway. Yes. What do you wish you knew at 20 that you now know? If it doesn't matter in five years, it doesn't matter. Cher told me that. It's the best piece of advice I've ever gotten. Your business partner is your husband, Dex. Yes. And you guys like to avoid falling under couples goals. Yeah. And you're instead really open about your relationship. What's one misconception you'd like to confront right now? I love working with my husband so much. And one thing we talk about a lot is this like label we've been given. And I think why we... And what label is that? Like relationship goals, couples goals, which is very flattering. But one thing that's really important to us to sort of shatter is do not sit out there and wait for your perfect person. Dax was not my perfect person. I am not his perfect person. I became a good enough person to learn how to earn someone like him. And he did the same. So when people put us on a pedestal, we get a little nervous because I don't want anyone to think like, I just need to find my Dax Shepard or I just need to find my Kristen. I want people to be realistic about it. We did, both did a lot of work on ourselves and we're ready to earn a partner that was ready for us. Do you ever feel like those expectations from the outside impact your relationship? No. That's good. No, for sure not. I mean, sometimes I guess when we're being like really grumpy to each other, we're like, we should probably be nice to each other because like America or whatever. <laughs> America wants us to be nice to Ooh. each other. No pressure though. Right. <laughs> well, what's one thing that's changed the most in your relationship over time? What has changed is probably our ability to strive for an evolved point of view quicker. Does that make sense? Like, yes. Initially, it takes a lot of time to meet in the middle because there's defensiveness and self esteem issues and confidence issues and trust issues. But the more you practice that, early on in the relationship, my guard would go up and I would become defensive. Now I have 15 years of behavior and examples to look at when I see this man and go, this man is disagreeing with me. My gut reaction is to be defensive. And yet I have enough examples that tell me that he's on my team, that he's on my team and there's something I'm missing that I'm not hearing. So let's talk more about it and stay open. You really lean on the trust that you guys have built together. Yeah, because that, I think that's the most important thing and staying vulnerable. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to be vulnerable, but once you practice it and it becomes habitual, and it's not always habitual, we certainly fall out of it and are totally rude to each other sometimes, but vulnerability only begets vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to be mean to people when they're being vulnerable. What's one thing you won't let change in your relationship? I don't think anything. I think relationships are meant to evolve. I don't have the same relationship with my parents as I had when I was eight years old. I don't have the same relationship with my kids as I did with the day they were born. I think they're meant to evolve. So, and that could mean a lot of different things. And what about yourself? What, if, what has changed the most about you over time as an individual? My ability to be truly honest and not put up a front of what I think people want from me. Because I'm very, I suffer from codependency and I want to give everybody like a nice bubbly personality. And I realized a couple years ago that is inauthentic and irresponsible. And I remind myself every day, don't fall into the trap of this like subconscious agreement we've made as humans to just, just show your, per, your perfection, your good stuff. It's like, that's boring. And do you have a mantra you lean into when you feel like you're trying to make yourself likable and you want to shut that down? I've got a lot of mantras. Sometimes I write them on my mirrors. My mantra for when I'm trying not to be codependent is probably protect yourself and do the next right thing. I love that. Yeah, because I get nervous to say things that might make someone else upset or even make someone else uncomfortable or simply not be the perfect thing that person wants to hear. But sometimes I have to stand up for my morals and ethics and say what I need to say. Mm -hmm. Tell the truth sooner. Yeah. It's my favorite one right now. Tell the truth sooner. Isn't that good? Ugh. 
All right, well, we're all talking about mental health more than ever. What aren't we talking about enough? I think we're not talking enough in regards to mental health about the comings and goings of it all. I think there are varying degrees of mental health. There's as many mental health issues out there as there are hair colors. Things you can do with avocado. Things you can do with avocado. Way better example. And they're all worth talking about. They're all worth receiving a support system for and they're all worth having um, options. After years on stage and screen, you launched two incredibly successful and conscious brands, This Bar Saves Lives and Hello Bella. My first question, is entrepreneurship something that's deep within you or was it the causes that attracted you to those businesses? It was the causes, for sure. I realized once I was given this platform, all the things I wanted to see happen in the world, I could leverage. I could leverage myself and say, I'll talk about this, I'll be a part of it, but it's gotta be done this way. It's gotta be done correctly. And with This Bar Saves Lives, there was no one doing a give back in the food space at that time. Because I felt like as a consumer, I wanted to make conscious decisions. And I felt like I can't be the only one on the planet that wants to sort of vote with my dollars. And with Hello Bello, it was right after we had had kids and we were unreasonably aware of the luxury we had of going to an LA boutique and buying like a premium baby care product and not looking at the price tag and how unfair that was. No parent should have to choose between their baby and their budget, so let's create a company with the economy of scale to have premium ingredients but have the price point be low with the accessibility and it just sort of all made sense. So quick segue. Before you were a parent, you yeah. made a pretty uh, viral video with your husband, Dax. Oh. Can you just walk me through the process of making the Dax and Kristen do Africa video? Of course, of course, of course, of course. We took a trip to Africa right before we thought, maybe let's get pregnant this year. It occurred to me right before we left that nobody looks at vacation pictures, like ever. Like maybe your grandparents, but that's it. And so I was like, you know what we should do? Make a music video. Mm -hmm. That's what we'll watch. Naturally. Right. Um, and we had been listening to Toto's Africa just to like rev ourselves up like while we were packing and in the week that we were like booking things. And I said, oh my gosh, this is the music video. We have to shoot it. So I wrote it all out on little post-it notes, the lines, which are very difficult to memorize. Mm. If you've ever heard mm -hmm. that song, there's a lot of, Trouble. There's crazy words in there. The stars are going tonight as they grow restless, longing for some solitary company. What? No idea. I'm sure that I must do what's right, sure as Kilimanjaro rises like Olympus above the Serengeti. What? So anyway, I had to write all those out and we just went all over Africa and videotaped ourselves uh, singing the lyrics to that song. And then my husband spent about two months cutting it together. Mm -hmm. uh, and we actually, we went to see the wildebeest migration, which is like the, still the biggest migration in all, all the whole globe. And uh, we were on the Serengeti. Our guide knew that we were making this video and he was like, I can keep an eye out if you wanna get out. And we were like, Okay, so we got out of the car and we were like doing the dance and getting videotaped and we, and we got a ticket from oh. the Serengeti police for $50. Kind of a cool ticket to get, The to ticket honest. says, for dancing on the Serengeti. So. Worth it. It'll be on my gravestone. How can we actually leave the world a better place than how we found it? You know, I don't, maybe I'm just an idealist, but I don't find pressure in that statement of like, leave it better than you found it because you can leave it better in any way. There's endless ways. And it doesn't have to be, it doesn't say leave it better in every way, you know? I think people put too much pressure on themselves to be like, oh, I've gotta be everything organic or everything has to be made out of bamboo now that I touch. It's like, no, it could just be one thing. Just use a bamboo toothbrush. Just buy from a plant-based company. Just pick up a piece of litter once in a while. As long as you're only comparing yourself to the version that you were yesterday, then you're doing great. Well, on that note, we are ready for rapid fire round. Are you? Okay, yes. Baby sloth or Dax? Ah. Oh. Dax. Okay, well you still get the baby sloth socks. <gasps> All Ooh. right, baby sloth or avocado? Oh, these are really hard. Avocado's easier to care for. <gasps> there you go. So many socks. So many socks. All right, voiceover or Broadway? These are not, 
This is like choosing between my two kids. Time is ticking. I like them both. Um, Broadway. Favorite line from Frozen? When uh, Anna apologizes to Kristoff and he says, it's okay, my love is not fragile. Weirdest Anna habit that comes from you? Talking too fast, spewing out information and then saying, wait, what? To try to get out of it. In your new show, your fam lives in Central Park. Yes. If you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? I would live at my house. Oh. I love my house. I love California. LA is really what you make of it. I love my house. All right, daily practice that keeps you sane. Mmm, working out. Mm. What do you I, do when you work out? Uh, well, I usually do this workout called Metamorphosis, which is like on a Pilates reformer, but it's their version of a Pilates reformer, and it's like sort of Pilates meets CrossFit, so it's like really heavy weight. I like muscle training. I do not like running. Wellness practice that you had to ditch that's not running. I have had to ditch a lot of stuff because let me tell you, I am so susceptible to every single thing that comes. I was so into microgreens one time that I was talking, my friends had to actually have an intervention and they were like, Kristen, you've told us about microgreens like three times today. Like we get it, they have a higher nutritional value, but like, just like, can you be chill? I'm still very into adaptogens, but I was taking a slew of, of adaptogens and I think it was too many. I was taking like maca and uh, ashwagandha and like seven other ones. And some of them work on your libido and I was getting too horny. And it was like not working for me. We're gonna talk to you about that one later. So I, ha yeah, if you put that, that right potion together. Hmm, that's the... You're gonna have to pull back. The Hello Bello starter kit. Yes, mm -hmm. that's right. Yes. Ooh, good idea. Uh -huh. All right, favorite thing to do with an avocado? Besides eat it. Besides eat it? Yeah. You know, you can't take away answers. This is my test. I have a very fond memory of uh, my daughter's uh, second food was avocado, but the first food we took a picture of her and she smashed it all over her face. And so my husband and I set up the camera and we smashed it all over our face and took a picture of all three of us smiling with avocado all over our face. Well, that's the best answer we've ever gotten. Feel good food. If I have an hour during the day, I'll make a soup, really like making soup, or I'll make a cauliflower crust pizza. Skincare product you swear by? Clarisonic. Oh, good. All day, all night. When I forget it, when I travel, I'm like nervous all day. Then I'm like, my, my pores are clogging. I can feel it. I can feel my pores yes. filling up. All right, funniest thing one of your daughters has ever said to you? She didn't say it to me, but I overheard her. It was a windy day in Los Angeles. We were out in the yard, and she said to her friend, you know, if your mom ever blows away in a windstorm, you just call 891. Oh, right. And I thought in my head, you're maybe not grasping everything that I'm telling you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And she said it with so much confidence. Well, let's hope you don't blow away. Yeah. Anytime soon. And also, what's 891? Yeah, I mean, don't call I was gonna ask, I thought I was uh, behind the times. No, here. it's not, it's not, I don't think it gets you anywhere. It's a new mommy honest. hotline. I guess. Mm -hmm. Who do you want to see on the show next? Lakeith Stanfield. Ooh. Okay, we'll work on that. Because he's one of my faves and I know nothing about him. All right, well, you have earned your avocado. Get to eat all of that. Thanks for coming on The Avocado Show, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. I'm Kristen Bell. Thank you for having me on The Avocado Show. We'll see you next time. I won't be here, but someone else will.